Up and all. So, I'm still working out what exactly I plan on doing with this channel now that the GGBO is over. The next couple of videos are probably going to be a bit on the experimental side. Opinion pieces, uh, video essays on leafery and filler videos, essentially, while I'm building up the budget to uh, get more parts for builds. Build videos are coming, but just, uh, you know, <sighs> bear with me for now. This video started off as a post that I was writing in the comments of Adair Guitar's last video. Kind of hit YouTube's character limit, and this has become a bit of an essay in itself. I might as well just turn it into a standalone video. Let's address the elephant in the room. Across many hobbies, 3D printing is a bit of a taboo subject. Back in what, 2014-2015, the Lufier high bind of the internet was getting in a bit of a tizzy over the whole issue of 3D printed guitars. You can't do that, they would scream. Heresy! Plastic isn't the tone wood! There were plenty of clickbaity articles floating around the internet about how 3D printing was the future of guitar making. Even Ben Crow got drawn into the subject on one of the very early Crimson Luffy podcasts. The problem, as far as I could tell it, was that most people who were writing angry comments were not actually familiar with 3D printing. They just saw a new threat, a new challenger in the sadly highly traditional and conservative world of guitar building. They just got their knickers in a twist over something that proved to be nothing, really. A recurring line of thinking I saw, like CNC machining, 3D printing is an easy mode. You press a button on a machine and 10 minutes later, you have a whole printed part ready, just like that. And you've had to do Zero work for it. Perfect tool for them lazy millennials, am I right? Whereas, real men use hand tools only. Realist men use vintage hand tools only. 100 years minimum. And as we know, the truest of real men break into archaeological digs to steal Roman woodworking tools that they hand sharpen using volcanic rocks that they have headbutted out of lava flows, use single malt scotch as a lubricant, and consume about 15 cows worth of steak per week. But before this video devolves into writing bronze and fan fiction, let's return to the matter at hand. Let's make one thing entirely clear. Odds are, even today, with all the improvements in 3D printing tech that have happened since 2014, 2015, you will never 3D print a guitar. Not because something, something, something plastic, something, something, something dark side. Honestly, it's not worth it. There are a few designs for 3D printed guitars floating around the internet. And I recall seeing a few 3D printed guitar startups. But the 3D printing revolution has not swept over the Lou Fury world. And it probably won't, at least not in the 3D printed guitar world. 3D printing is not really technologically suited to making guitars. Yes, you can make them. The best there'll be technology demonstrators, the worst there'll be novelty. Realistically, when we speak of a 3D printed guitar, we're speaking of a 3D printed guitar body. And even then, a partially printed body at that. With the pickups, bridge, and neck joint, and usually these things use a bolt-on strat style neck, mounted to a wooden plank which serves as the core of the guitar, and the rest of the body being 3D printed wings, effectively. Kind of like that modular guitar Tim Sway made a couple of years ago, but with plastic rather than wood. The thing is, 3D printed materials are not ideal as structural guitar components. They don't have the strength to resist the tension of guitar strings, without either bending or snapping and delaminating. So you can't really use them as necks. And you can't really use them as bodies either. If you put a convention 3D printed part under tension, odds are that the layers will just tear themselves apart, which is why they're called most 3D printed guitars just are based around wood. On top of that, most 3D printers are just a little bit too small to print something the size of a guitar body in one go. You have to divide up the body, print up multiple parts, and that would take several days of constant printing. Now, in the last six months or so, there has been a variant of the popular end of free printer developed that prints on a conveyor belt, so that you can, in theory, print very large to infinite length objects. But again, that's a new development, it's not yet really fully in the mainstream, so it's going to take some time before that's cheap and reliable. There are commercial services like Shapeways that have access to really big printers that, uh, instead of using filaments, use uh, nylon powders and lasers to melt it all together. The catch there, at the price point they're charging for something the size of a guitar body, just be better off buying a regular guitar. In fact, you would probably be better off just dropping an email to Crimson and making an inquiry about uh, the complication. Before someone says it, you can buy wood 3D printing filaments, but for the most part it's just MDF in a plastic binder with a bit of wood colour thrown in. If you want an MDF guitar, there are easier ways. To... Now, I'm not saying this to crush the folk singing dreams of a bead bending Rodriguez, but at this point, a 3D printing guitar just isn't worth doing. I'm not saying it isn't doable, or that it shouldn't be done. Just that as the technology exists right now, 3D printing offers pretty much zero advantage over traditional guitar making. That may well change in the future, but for right now there isn't much point. It's a bit like 
making a working piano out of Lego. Sure, it's impressive if you can pull it off, but it's not practical enough to be worth it, and it's unlikely that there's ever going to be a Lego Steinway collaboration. So, what can a 3D printer do for you, the budding Mufia? Why should you part with your hard earned cash for a glorified hot glue gun? So, where 3D printers excel is really the small scale, not the large. Go, go look at any guitar you own and identify all the plastic parts on it. Go on, I'll wait. From the pickup rings, the truss rod access cover, to that tiny little knob on the selector switch that went flying off at that gig you played back in 2015, that you swear that you're going to buy a new one for every time you go down to the guitar shop to buy some strings and you always forget every freaking time. There are a lot of plastic parts on a guitar. With a 3D printer and a bit of know-how, you can make pretty much all of those yourself. In the comfort of your own home, in a wider variety of colours and materials than you will ever be able to find commercially. Sparkly purple pickup rings? Sure, why not? Do you want your own custom pickups? Well, how about printing your own bobbins? Make them glow in the dark green? Why not? You can buy the film for it. Custom 3D printed fretboard inlays? Go for it. Ever had someone come up to you and say, Hey dude, you make guitars, right? Can you make me a Hello Kitty Les Paul to go with my Hello Kitty Strat? Well, if you can find the right shade of pink filaments to go with the paint job, you can at last hold your head up high and in a proud, confident voice exclaim, Hell yes! No longer will you go down on someone's phone contacts as Andy the Dream Crusher. But Andy, I hear you cry. If I get into 3D printing, I would have to learn how to do CAD, and I don't like using the devil thinking machines. They're Satan incarnate, I tells you. What with their Y2K and fake news algorithms? Well, if that's the case, then... Good news, everyone! There's this site called Thingiverse. It's a repository of 3D printable models made by Thingiverse members that anyone can download. Entirely for free, and for the most part, entirely open source as well. Thousands of 3D prints available. Granted, most of them are useless novelties, but there is a pretty decent amount of guitar and luthiery related stuff available there as well. String winders, fret rockers, a whole set of surprisingly accurate unstring radio schedules. Those are just a few that I've printed. I've seen uh, file holders for fret pressing, fret wire radiuses, mounting rings, knobs, those tiny little knobs that go on the end of pickup selector switches, etc. There's tons out there. Now, are they perfect? No, probably not. Let's be honest, many of us could probably jury rig something together out of masking tape, super glue, and the contents of our scrap wood bins. But if you're in a pinch and you don't have the budget to drop on a tool that you really need right now, it will take a few hours of printing and a trip down to the hardware shop to buy some nuts and bolts. You can get something that will work surprisingly well, but what if you can't find what you're looking for? Okay, well now, now we're getting into DIY territory. Learning CAD these days is not really difficult. Specifically, because of 3D printing, amateur level CAD is experiencing one hell of a boom right now. There are tutorials on YouTube for pretty much every CAD suite. Once you pick up a bit of it and get a bit of experience in how to print things, you can pretty much make anything you want. I mean, 3D printing is exceptionally user-friendly. It's gotten to the point where most printers will produce dimensionally accurate prints to a tolerance of within 0.2 of a millimeter pretty much out of the box and without much in the way of user calibration. And from there, your only limits really are your imagination and your print bed size, and maybe your print orientation. I couldn't have made my GGBO bridge if it wasn't for the templates I made. I'm, I'm half decent with farm work, but I have always struggled with drilling holes accurately the old fashioned way. Being able to print custom drill guides that take all the guessing out of metal work is an absolute game changer for me. That alone made it worthwhile. And that's before we even get into things like being able to make custom routing templates and custom mounting hardware. So, should you get a 3D printer? Well, as with all the big questions in life, it's complicated and there isn't really a one-size-fits-all answer. I personally would say yes, but I am heavily biased because 3D printing is such a large part of my work, I genuinely don't think I could go back to not having a 3D printer. Now, granted, if you are of the serious school of Booty Glue Fury, and would rather gnaw your own leg off and let a machine do anything for you, then no, 3D printing is probably not for you. Noise this channel. At this point, 3D prints are common enough that the economy of scale has kicked in and produced the price of a half decent machine to about 200 to 250 local currency units. Filament is at about 20 local currency units per kilo. Honestly, at that point, I'd argue that it is worth a gamble, at least to try it out. So yeah, 3D printing new fury. You'll never 3D print a guitar, but you will probably find several very useful uses for a glorified hot glue. Anyway, that's uh, that's all I got for now. So yeah, thanks for watching.